ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to our prospective pupils and families. My name is Tamika Hugh Hamilton, and I'm the proud head teacher for Hewens Primary School, which forms a part of the Rosedale Hewens Academy Trust. I take great pleasure and pride to welcome you to our foundation year's open evening for nursery and reception. At Hewens, we work hard to ensure that every child is happy and well supported on their journey from foundation years through to Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 in preparation for secondary school. We want every child to grow and flourish in our care. We are driven by a pursuit of high academic standards regardless of starting points and a desire for all pupils to experience an exceptional education. I believe schools should be happy, vibrant and forward-thinking learning environments where all children are nurtured, encouraged and supported to achieve the highest standards and develop as young people. I am very passionate about education because it has the power to change lives for the better. For me, it is crucial for a school to know the child and their parents, as well as to develop every aspect of the child, tapping into their interests and enabling their talents to blossom. At Hewens, we believe in aiming high, raising aspirations, and achieving excellence. There were some truly outstanding results in last year's end of early years, good level of development, and this has been so for the past three years. All performance since 2018 has been above national and local as at least 82.3% of our pupils entered Key Stage 1 with a good level of development. We demand the highest standards of behavior, courtesy and respect towards all members of the community. Taking pride in appearance is an essential part of being at Huens Primary School as a pupil and we have a strict uniform and behavior policy. You will see this clearly when you walk around the school. The Alliance Point system helps to cement this community as well as allowing pupils to take responsibility. We aim for all our pupils to be leaders and team players and take action to help others. We provide our children with a challenging and creative curriculum that stimulates collaboration and inspires independence. That said, we know that the single most influential factor in successful education is the attitude of a child's family. Therefore, we emphasize the importance of a family commitment to supporting our school and home and ensuring that pupils come to school ready to learn each and every day. I hope this evening is the start of our journey together, creating bright futures for all, today, tomorrow, and generations to come. Thank you for watching. Hello, welcome to Little Acorns Nursery. I'm the nursery teacher, Miss Rahman. Hello, welcome to Little Acorns class. I'm just gonna give you a little tour of our nursery. So our morning children start at 8.30 and when they come in, we bring them to the nursery. They put the belongings away and the jackets. We encourage the children to go to that table and pick up the name cards, which they'll put away. Um, all of our children have a soft start, so when they come in, they pick a book which they read with a teacher or a friend. It's just to get them into the session, ease them in before we do our carpet learning. Um, when the children come in, we go through the days of the week. We ask them how they're feeling. We go through our six R's. So this week we are focusing on being reflective. The children have a word of the week. So we learn a new word every week. Um, our carpet inputs are mainly around our topic. Um, we usually do literacy or a math topic on the carpet. Once we've done our carpet learning, we go through our daily diary so the children know what they have to do. Um, the children, after carpet, they get to choose what activity they like to do. Um, also during that time, the children do an adult-led activity with a teacher. All the activities are based around our topic. 
Um, I'm just gonna give you a little tour of the nursery. So this time we are focusing on different celebrations and we have an interest table dedicated to all the different festivals that are coming up. Um, each table has an activity that um, is connected to our topic. So this week we're going to be celebrating Remembrance Day so the children have to match the puppies to the numbers. We've got Play-Doh which is to encourage um, fine motor development. Um, we've got math activity, writing table. We have a funky area at the back where the children develop the fine motor skills. Um, our home corner for them to do role playing in. The children love the home corner. We have a small world where they can build their own town. So in nursery, we focus on the three prime areas, which is personal, social, emotional development, communication language. And for communication language, we do lots of book reading, lots of singing. We encourage the children to do lots of talking and ask lots of questions. For physical development, the children get to play inside and outside of the nursery. We have a funky finger area, which is to help the children develop the fine motor skills. So each week we have various different activities. This is our creative table, so the children could decorate a poppy or they can do, um, they can do junk modelling or they can colour in various different pictures. So the resources are there and the children get to choose as we want them to be independent and make their own choices. We have, we have our reading area here, so the children can do independent reading they get to choose what books they want to uh, read. We have musical instruments so they can do singing if they want. Um, the children love painting so we always have painting out for them to do. Uh, we also have a role play area. This week the role play area is um, all Diwali ready so the children could do henna patterns, they could dress up, they can act out the Ram and Sita story which they have learnt this week. So each area of the nursery is dedicated to different areas of learning for the children to participate in. So this is our outdoor area. The children are encouraged to come and play um, in all weather conditions. They have a mud kitchen where they can be creative and do lots of lovely cooking. We have our home corner so they can do more role playing. They can choose the bike if they wish to go on the bike. We try to get the outdoor to mirror the nursery, so we have a reading area, the children do mark making outside, they play um, lots of group games, we have a house for them to do role playing in as well down there, they could do some building work, so we just encourage the children to be very creative when we're outside and you know some of the activities are adult led and some of the activities the children get to choose what area of the playground they wish to play in. Copy the pattern, like copy. So look at Miss Mia's pattern. That's my pattern. Yeah, that's your pattern. Hello, my name is Miss Mia and I'm one of the nursery partners. Hello, I'm Miss Hashimi and I'm one of the nursery teaching partners. Just circle like this and then tap. Hello, my name is Miss Tinolari and I am nursery teaching partner. Okay, welcome to Blossom class. I'm Mrs. Washington. I'm the teacher of the classroom. I'm just going to give you an overview of what we do in our class. Um, the children come into class each morning and they have their name cards on the table. They select their name cards, put it away, they know the place, and then they go and write their names on the board. And that is practice for them to get better at writing their names independently. After they've done that, each child is able to go and find an activity to do during our soft start period. And during that period, they also engage in finger gym activities where they might be doing pencil control, lots of other activities to develop their fine motor skills because that's one of the base for writing and we need children to be able to use their fingers very efficiently. At 
nine o'clock, most of the children would be in and we start our registration and then we have phonics for half hour. It might go a little beyond because if the child or the children are very interested, we don't want to stop the activity. So we do the phonics and we are in the process of doing jolly phonics. After having that, we get them to do some blending because the children at this point are beginning to blend. It has started a bit earlier this year and we are pleased with the progress that we are seeing. Then the children have their jolly phonic booklets that they complete based on the song that we've done for the day and they are becoming so efficient at doing that they are able to complete most of them with little or no support and they read the words to complete that task. Then we also have focus tasks in literacy based on our topic. Our topic this half term is Let's Play and so we have lots of activities planned for that and they have their literacy book that they are going to complete tasks that's been planned for them during that uh, for that day. We also have daily maths activities that we plan for the children and every day we try to engage them in maths challenges that will take into consideration the topics and the concepts that we have already completed and the children are able to be so good at responding and telling us how they got the answers for that question for those questions or whatever questions it is the children are very good at they're very confident in selecting tasks they're eager to learn even when there is a focused task they will come around eager to get their activities done so i know whatever we're doing in class with the children are creating that interest in them to learn they are really eager to learn hi welcome to cherry class i'm miss batten cherry class teacher i'm just going to show you around what we could do during the day so if you'd like to follow me so as you can see we have our interactive whiteboard and there's a lesson going on right now. They're doing some shapes, so the children are really engaged. They really enjoy using our interactive whiteboard. We also have a range of activities on the different tables that the children get to use. So it's their choice as well, but we also do uh, book work. We also have the maths and literacy book work that the teachers do with the children as well. So we do a range of different learning activities according to topic or if there's any special week that week. Next week's anti-bullying week, so we'll be participating in that with our literacy books too. If you'd like to follow me, we have our role play area. So we had a classroom vote and the children chose that they wanted dinosaurs. So we've set up a dinosaur museum with a range of different activities that they can do. They've got some writing activities, they can explore the sand, they also have tools with money in as well that they can explore. So they're really enjoying engaging in that. We also have our classroom pets. It's a leopard gecko called Raya. The children absolutely love learning all about looking after animals and how we can keep her safe in classroom. Good evening parents and carers. It's an honor for me to be talking to you today 
about our early years provision at Ewens Primary School. I'm glad to be able to share with you what the overview is like at our school. We know that in the foundation stage, it's some very vital years that we have with the children. And as we said, the word foundation, we know foundation is the base for anything. Even in building a house without a strong foundation, you wouldn't be able to have a proper house. It will collapse. Therefore, what we do during these vital years of a child's life is very, very crucial for his or her development. The foundation stage documents guides us in preparing the children for their development and progressing towards the, the other levels. Although there has been some changes to this document, it still focuses on the seven areas of learning. And those areas are divided into the prime areas and the specific areas. However, I would like to focus greatly on the prime areas, which consist of the personal, social and emotional development, the physical development, and communication and language. The specific areas are more literacy, maths, knowledge and understanding of the world, and creativity. However, these seven areas are further divided into 17 strands. And some, as before, have some simple changes that does not really affect what is planned. When we look at the prime areas, we realize that these are the main areas that will help the child for later life development. For example, if we are focusing on the physical development, we know that children need to have lots of skills for fine motor and large motor uh, development. And their fine motor development further helps them to engage in writing and uh, handwriting. Therefore, as parents and even at the nursery level, we expect that the children will be doing lots of pre-writing skills to develop those small muscles. And we have that at UN Primary School, where the children at the nursery are engaging so many pre-writing skills. We also would like to focus on our Liter or communication. Communication is vital, so we expect that the children coming into the school uh, should be able to have a form base in communication, in language. So what we would like to encourage parents, even before the child gets into reception class, is to engage them with lots of talking, reading stories, asking questions, get the children to communicate their ideas and they will develop that sense of confidence and independence and it will further help them to settle well into the reception classes. Then we also have the PSED, which is the Personal Social and Communication. A child who has developed well in those areas will be a confident child, a confident learner and when they get into the nursery or into reception class, they will be able to settle very well into those classes. And the quicker the child settles, the more progress we will be able to see. So we encourage parents, even before the children are ready to start school, to engage them in conversation, to engage them in things that will help them to be confident, to get them to do things for themselves so that they are able to self-regulate and, and talk about ideas and how we behave in certain situations, get them to do self-help skills, feeding themselves, dressing themselves, all those aids uh, confidence within a child. So when that child comes into the class, that child is already confident to talk with adults, to talk with people, and as such, they will progress in their learning. Finally, I would encourage all parents, if you're choosing Ewins Primary School or any other school as a matter of fact, 
to engage the child with lots of conversations, encourage the child to read books, to look at books, to have discussions, to talk, to engage them in simple number activities. Um, we know that parents focus a lot on the handwriting, but we'd prefer to see you do activities that will develop the finer muscles and when they come in, handwriting will not be a difficult task to them. We wish you all the best and your children all the best throughout this year and every other year. And we know that we have a part to play and we expect to work closely with you so that the final result will be the best outcome for both your children and for us as a whole. Thank you. Safeguarding our children is a number one priority at Hewens Primary School. There are four designated safeguarding leads at our school and our children can speak to any adult about anything that is worrying them. Safeguarding, including mental health and well-being, is also taught as a part of our PSHE curriculum so that our children know how to keep safe at all times. Knowledge is power. Hello, I'm Mrs Selenke at Ewan's Primary School, part of our Welfare and Admin team. An important part of my role is to monitor and manage children's punctuality and attendance. Why does school attendance matter? Missing a few days of school may not seem like it would make a big difference, but research shows that it can have a significant impact on children's learning. Children who miss a substantial amount of school fall behind their peers and struggle to catch up. This is why it is important to ensure your child attends school regularly. We thrive on providing support to our families to make sure every child's attendance is good. So what is considered as a good attendance rate? The government's national expectation is 96% and above. However, persistent absence is defined as an attendance rate of 90% or below. Your child is required to be in school by the latest of 8.45 a.m. every morning so they can complete a soft start in mathematics or literacy and then move on to other lessons promptly. It is also very important that children establish good routines and habits in preparation for the rest of their lives. Punctuality and regular attendance is a life skill that they need to develop whilst they are still young. We understand that there may be rare occasions when you're unavoidably late or absent due to unforeseen circumstances or your child is absent from school due to sickness. On these occasions, please make sure that you contact the school office and inform us as soon as possible. If you experience difficulties with your child's attendance and would like to talk to us about it, please let us know. Another integral part of my role is managing your child's medical needs. If your child has a medical need, you must inform us with all the details in the form of a care plan. This will, this will ensure that we provide your child with the best care during their time at school. For example, if your child has asthma, we will require you to fill out an asthma card and an emergency asthma pack consent form. If your child has an allergy, we will also require an official action plan from the hospital. We also support families where prescribed medication can be administered by our, our trained staff. There is a simple form that needs to be filled out. This form should indicate the correct in instructions of when and how we can provide your child with this medication. If your child's medical needs change, we will need to be informed as soon as possible. Your child's welfare is paramount to our school. We have safeguarding provisions in place to ensure we support our families where needed. If you have any questions in regards to our medical policy, please refer to our website for full details. Hello, my name is Miss Jem. I am part of the Welfare and Admin team here at Hewins Primary School. Today I will be speaking to you about our online cashless service, which we use to purchase school uniform and pre-order school meals. As well as that, I'll be speaking to you about free school meals and how to apply. On screen, you can see a document which shows your child's unique reference number. You will use the reference number to create an account. As you can see, step by step, 
Instructions have also been given to help you create an account. You can find the cashier service on our school website. Once you have registered, you then need to click on account where you can find your child's name, then click select and here you can find here you can see both accounts for uniform and school meals. Over to free school meals. If you're currently on benefits, you could be entitled to free school meals. On screen, you can see a form which can be collected from the school office. All you need to do to apply is complete this form and return it, return it to the school office. If you need any further information or assistance on IPA or free school meals, please come and contact us at the school office and we will assist you further. In this section of the virtual school tour, we'll talk about the alliance groups. I'm Mr Mono. So at Hewins Private School, children are placed in one of four alliances. The alliances are Aldrin, named after Buzz Aldrin, Columbus, named after Christopher Columbus, Garrett Anderson, named after Elizabeth, Garrett Anderson, and MacArthur, named after Dane Ellen MacArthur. The Alliance Point system is a school initiative which gives pupils a shared opportunity to develop team building skills and competitive skills. Many teachers, including myself, use their lines points to motivate pupils in their learning and to encourage them to follow the six R's at all times. Each week, the four alliances compete to collect the most points and the winner is announced in our school assembly every week or in class. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Hello and welcome. My name is Patricia Shoemi and I am the SEMCO for Hewins Primary School. I hope to give you some useful information about special educational needs, things that you might wonder about or things that you're not quite sure about. So special educational needs is a legal definition and refers to children with learning problems or disabilities that make it harder for them to learn than most children the same age. Children and young people with SEN will be identified in many different ways. Some may have their SEN identified by a health worker or a paediatrician in their early life and some children and young people's needs may become evident later on in life. For example, when they enter a certain stage of education, for instance, from early years to key stage one or key stage one to key stage two. There are four broad areas of special educational needs. Communication and interaction, cognition and learning, social, emotional and mental health, sensory and or physical needs. Special educational needs support is the support that children and young people who have special educational needs can get in school. When a child is identified as having SEN, they are placed on the school's SEN register with parental permission, and they are placed under register as receiving um, special educational needs support. A special educational needs coordinator, or SENCO, is a teacher such as myself at a school who is in charge of making sure students who have special educational needs or disabilities get the support they need. A speech and language therapist is someone who helps children and young people who might find it harder to communicate. An education psychologist looks at how a child or young person can be better supported to learn. Health support can um, help someone to stay healthy. People like physiotherapists or occupational therapists or even a school nurse come in to help your children who are on the SEN register stay healthy and able to function in class and in school. An education, health and care needs assessment is something that may be needed if the school, the head teacher, the SENCO feels it necessary to go to the next level of support for a child. It might be that outside professionals have 
recommended that the child be assessed for um, um, their educational and health needs. So this assessment will look at what extra support children and young people with special educational needs might need in their life. If when this assessment is agreed by the local authority, the, it will then lead on to something called an education health and care plan. This plan says what support a child or young person who has special educational needs must get. This is a legally binding and statutory document, so it must be followed. You can find extra help and support by visiting the Hillingdon um, website, um, Hillingdon Offers, and you will get um, additional information there. Otherwise, you can contact the school and ask to speak to myself, and my information is also on the school website where you can find the SEND policy and the SEND report that will give you additional information. Thank you. We always work in partnership with all our parents, guardians and carers to ensure that we provide the best care for our children. As such, we provide daily wraparound care for all our pupils from reception to year six. Need to reach work early? Our breakfast club provision starts at 7.45 a.m. for only one pound. The children have the opportunity to partake in lots of stimulating activities and have a balanced breakfast. Likewise, our after-school care starts at 3.30 p.m. and ends at 5.30 p.m. for the cost of only six pounds. This includes sandwich of your choice, a fruit and a drink. Email us or call our school office to sign up and find out more. At Hewins Primary School, communication is key. We communicate to our parents on a weekly basis via our school newsletter, which can be found on the school website. On the top of our school newsletter, you will see our contact details, our email address and our school number. We thrive on responding to parents within 24 hours from our school email. Our phone number, our office hours are from 8am till 430 if you would like to contact us outside these hours, please send us an email. On the back of our school newsletter, you will find the upcoming diary date and the next week's school menu. On the front of our school newsletter, you will see the activities we do on a weekly basis. Please remember to sign section seven of the application form to give consent for your child's photograph to be taken. Also, check out our new YouTube page which highlights the cultural capital of the school. Thank you. In this section of the virtual open evening, I will discuss most children's favorite subject. You've guessed it, physical education. Our PE scheme of work covers the whole school and matches national curriculum outcomes. Each term, children practice different sports such as gymnastics, dance, games, athletics, and many more. At Hewins Primary School, we are fortunate to have specialist PE teachers who deliver quality lessons with intent and leave them impact. What is our cultural capital? At Hewins Primary, learning is fun and prepares children to function effectively in society whilst improving our cultural capital. Our curriculum offer provides more opportunities for pupils to explore and appreciate diverse cultures through daily lessons, whole school events and after school fun clubs. Hewens Primary is a melting pot of all cultures and with equal opportunities for all pupils. Now take a look at some of the activities which can be found on our YouTube channel. A person whose job is to check people's teeth is called a blossom class. Dentist. Correct. What part of the body sends and receives messages to and from? Brain. 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 Correct. You're a rock blossom. 
Well, now I'll take you back in the dark ages of time when the world was dim. A time where people used smoke signals as a form of communication. Shocking, right? My opponents, smoke signals could only send the simplest of messages. But as time went on, the population grew and they needed to send longer messages as well as sending them to a different country. Audience, please join me in a moment of laughter. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Opponent, do you really think that technology will create more problems in the future than it will solve? Think again, my opponent. Do you really want to continue to defend your last play? Technology will let people work from home. The hundreds of apps out there that let them have meetings with each other.
from my electro. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard.
Mr. Fazelamal, head boy of Hewins Primary School. Hello, my name is Kira Bowles. I'm the head girl of Hewins Primary. In Hewins Primary School, we have a set of children called the School Council. Pupils like us are nominated and we are now the pupil voice. We participate in numerous of fun, act of fun activities. But don't worry, I assure you that our environment is safe and happy. Come on and join us. Your, Your child, child can, can be a school leader too. too. 